Hello, I'm Donald McCauley from BJGP, and today I'm talking to Professor Trish Greenhouse from Oxford. Trish, you're doing some really exciting research work at the moment related to COVID-19. Tell me a little bit about your work. Well, we've got a number of different research projects going, but perhaps the one that's most relevant to GPs is the work we're doing on video consultations. So it's actually been, I think, about 11 years since I started looking at uh, consulting with patients by video. Now, we learned a lot about implementing video consultations in that environment. And now what we're doing is transferring that learning to get uh, tens of thousands of GPs and practice nurses uh, confidently and safely consulting by video in this very different situation where face-to-face -face contact with patients has suddenly become uh, potentially quite dangerous. Uh, and that's partly because the patient might have COVID, might give it to you, but it's also because you, the health professional, might have COVID and be incubating it without realising it and give it to the patients and, and the... Just for those watching, you've put some guidance up on the RCGP website. There is some guidance on the RCGP website, and I've also done two articles for the British Medical Journal, both of which are open access. It's got an interesting challenge, that, because what we've got is an, an army of retired GPs who have who stepped forward and said that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll help in this crisis, they're very willing to help. Um, some of them haven't actually seen a patient for a few years, uh, and they've got to do two things. One is they've got to get back into the clinical dynamic of, of, of making the sort of judgments with patients who might deteriorate quite rapidly. But the other thing is they've got to get their head around how they do that by video. Tricia said something really interesting about the potential for doctors themselves to be transmitters of this disease. The, I, I saw something in the New England Journal this morning that was talking about hospitals as um, engines of infection. So, so it's, it's the hospital that they're talking about, but I mean, it's, it, it applies to us in primary care just as, as readily. So have you any specific message for our GP colleagues related to that? Well, one of the other things I'm doing, I'm working with Carl Hennigan's team and various others at the University of Oxford to do what we call rapid reviews. And so one of the ones we've already uh, published is around the different kinds of masks, but we're also looking at uh, what, what is sometimes known as the armour light PPE that the GPs are expected to wear, which is a plastic apron. It looks, it looks fairly kind of low tech as opposed to the sort of respirator masks and the full body coverage that, that, that sometimes is worn in hospitals. So we're looking at the, the, the GP level kit um, and we're also looking at what counts and what should be counted as an aerosol generating procedure, questioning some of those things that are very standard in primary care like measuring peak flow, uh, just someone coughing all over you, uh, but we want to look at the evidence and if necessary push back Trish, that's really important information for our GP colleagues. Thank you very much. Today I've been talking to Professor Trish Greenhalgh from Oxford. Trish, thank you very much indeed.